Hello YouTube, Mystery Report, and Tudor subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is June 29, 2020. And this is the uh, report that uh, the date on this has been changed several times. I've been trying, and my apologies for, for being late on this. There's so much work that uh, it's been, I've been having difficulty catching up. This weekly newsletter program is about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight, using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1-1 through Revelation. And just to give you a brief, for those that don't know what I'm talking about, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. This is the key to breaking the code in the first verse of the Bible. You're going to find these spirit, blood, and water witnesses even the entire Bible, Old Testament, Pauline epistles, kingdom epistles, this pattern is reoccurring in the scriptures. And that's my that's my gift that God gave me, pattern recognition and seeing things when, uh, when other people have difficulty seeing it. And this particular Bible tutor questions, this is a difficult um, topic to try to explain. So Galen is going to make some good points. He's going to be a skeptic. And this is very, very common. Whenever you begin seeing things in the scriptures through the three witnesses, these witnesses themselves are going to begin testifying. They're all going to be testifying all at the same time about one another. All right. All water witnesses, all spirit witnesses, all blood witnesses. You have these families of witnesses. And when you realize who's a blood witness, who's a water witness, who's a spirit witness, then that they testify about other witnesses in the same group. Then the lights start coming on. And then you can see things that other people won't, will not be able to see. So this is an explanation for what Galen is presenting up here. This is his complete email sent to me right up to here. And we're going to address each point down here. So thank you for writing and your support. For your support of the mystery port tutor program you wrote he says women are from venus men are from mars and i know almost everybody here has heard of that so i believe once popular colloquial phrase went it's actually title to john gray's 1992 book and now when i try to understand your logic and statements i truly feel as though we might actually originate from different stock <laughs> uh, you quoted um and then this should have been indented here that was his statement. Your uh, your quote comes from this book, and it has a physiological and a biblical explanation that's touched on in my book. I'll show you these diagrams here. Well, you're looking at one of them that's right here. So to address this point, because women truly are from Venus, I mean, not the planet, but they are more emotional. And Peter says the weaker vessel weaker physically, but stronger in other ways. Women have gifts that are stronger than men. And men have gifts that are stronger than women, but it takes a male and a female to make a man. You go back and read Genesis 1, 26 through 28. That is made clear. So Adam, this is pre-fall Adam in Genesis 2, 7. When he's made, Eve is inside of him. Her seed is inside of him. That's what comes out after they're put in human skins. When you're reading Genesis 3, 15, you'll see the curse and the prophecies about her seed, which is right here, and your seed, which is Satan's seed, of the tree of the garden. No, it's not an apple. And this is all taking place in heaven all the way to Genesis 3, 21, when they're put in skins, human skins. The verse right before that, Genesis 3, 20, says that Eve is mother of all living. And she is. And I'm going to break this down for you. So this is the way Adam started. Eve was taken out of his side. And her seed came out too. When you see Christ on the cross, this was made, what, last lesson or the lesson before? The water and the blood that came out of his side. I think that was Pamela. This is extremely important. And you cross-reference that with 1 John 5. Start at verse 6, where Christ came in water and blood. Not water only, water and blood. This is what came out of Adam's side. The water is Eve. The blood is the seed. Her seed that comes out. The 
the forbidden fruit had to be introduced, must be introduced into this scenario so that whenever Adam and Eve, they ate the fruit, then they could see, and they also had the serpent seed inside of them so that whenever, even today, you can have a Cain or you can have an Abel. Either way, they got Cain first, Abel came along, Cain kills his brother. So this is a image, a picture that you can, if you can get it together and see what a singularity expression soul looks like. This is a living soul, Adam, with Eve and her seed and Adam all in one living host. This is the way the host existed in the perfect ages of Genesis 1.1. Nobody was born. Everybody was created. And they were created perfect, mature, complete. Just like you see right here. So that's the explanation that I give for you right here. And this is touched on in my book, The Mystery Explained. A little bit. The uh, young Christians, young babes in Christ growing up, they're going to see this as, well, like a lot of the things that I'm sharing with you. As heresy. Doesn't make sense until you can see the larger picture. Um, people think I'm a heretic because I show you the difference between the Almighty and my Father who art in heaven. They're different. The difference between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. So to some people, that's heresy <laughs> until they can see it. But remember, John the Baptist and Christ were heretics. And even Paul, heretics to his own people. Whenever they didn't understand, what the heck is this guy talking about? So what you're looking at here, and uh, for those that don't know, then the Lord God took me through six-day teachings before I ever read the Bible the first time as a teenager and in my early uh, 20s, reading all kinds of books and studying Eastern religions, and there are connections. It's not the same thing for six-day people as it is seven-day people, but there are some similarities. And so these power centers, you can click on this link, Human Aura, Power Centers, they call them chakras, power centers. Throughout my book, they're called the power centers. And there are seven of them. Three uppers, three lowers. Higher mind, lower mind. Spirit, soul, body, first the top three, the crown, third eye, and the throat. One witness. There are three. They're supposed to be a singularity. It's supposed to be one, but there are three. The lower, this is where most of the thinking happens. That gut feeling. Most people walking around thinking in beta waves, and their gut is their, their where their mind works. The earthly mind. More heavenly, more earthly. So you have a higher and a lower self. What the, 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 what the mystery explained adds to this is the showing how each is a witness. They're, and they're all testifying. This, this, this uh, third eye guy testifying for the original singularity. Spleen guy. Original singularity from the upper and the lower. And, the, and whenever you get into my book, I mean, you begin with diagrams like this. The one that I showed you earlier. And then this is broken down into this. So instead of the heaven here, see my father art in heaven? He's right here. The Almighty is over here. My father art in heaven, he's here. You see heaven? That's where my Father Wart in Heaven gets his name. Right here he is. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I and the Father are one. Also, the word says, I and the Almighty are one. See the circle? They are. And one with the creation. Heaven and creation. See how they share this circle? The Holy Spirit shares that circle with the only begotten Son, just like the Father does. So, the Son could just as easily say, I and the Holy Spirit are one. And it would be just as true. Based upon exactly what you see right here. Overlapping circles. Then diagrams. That's what was revealed to me. It was shown to me. When I was working in London. In the early 19, 1980s. I'm sorry. Early 1990s. And uh, when I was first saying it, I didn't believe it either. God took time to walk me through and showing me in faith. He put something there for me to stand on so I could reach the next step, then the next step. So the great thing about the mystery explained is that 
I've made those steps. Took decades to see these things. And since this was written in 2005, nothing has changed. So as your doctrine, as your, as your growth, you're growing up as a babe, everything changes. As your knowledge grows, your wisdom grows, you see more and more and more. But once you reach a certain level and nothing changes, that's when you know you made it. Okay. So, and there's a lot in here. This is part of a, the previous diagram in my book. It's a big diagram that is enlarged above. That's not even here for you to see. But this one shows the sun incarnate in heaven. This one shows the sun incarnate on the earth. And this one shows the, carnate, the sun incarnate in you. Colossians 127. Christ in you. So obviously before you can draw these things, you have to be able to see them by the spirit. And I know that a lot of people, people that I'm helping right now, when they first came aboard, they couldn't see hardly a darn thing. And they had the attitude like Galen has here. And you're supposed to question. Do that. That's what you're here. That's what I'm here for. Question me. Challenge me. That the, any uh, um, interpretation that cannot stand debate means you need to go get another interpretation. I'm happy to defend the truth as God has shown it to me. So uh, here's the thing to realize. The important part. Looking at figure three, the upper power centers testify as the higher self, while the three lower witnesses testify as the lower self. The heart, soul, judging between the two. So you have a screen going on in your mind. It's black and white. And beta waves, higher mind is like the parent, lower mind is like the child. And your higher self is always trying to give you information, but like you are teaching your children. So it's not to get you in trouble. So it's a parent-child relationship, psychologically, going on inside of each person. So uh, the key for understanding the men from Mars and women from Venus relationship is to realize we are looking at a person living on seven, seven separate and individual planes of existence. The Lord God removed Eve from Adam's side, taking her gifts associated with the second, fourth, and sixth planes, leaving Adam with the gifts associated with the first, third, fifth, and seventh planes of existence. The simple truth explains, this simple truth explains why women have the power of emotions, of uncanny intuition. How many men have experienced that? Like I have. And etheric capabilities removed from man. So Eve took it out, two, four, and six. The man, in general, um, in general control, the man is in general control and gifted physically over women. That's the first plane. Using logic more than emotion, the third plane. With superior spiritual capacity, the fifth plane. That's not always the case for everybody. This is general. And esoteric capabilities. Therefore, both the male, 1, 3, 5, and 7, and the female, 2, 4, 6, comprise the man of Genesis 127, created in the triune image of the Almighty, God to come, God who is, and God who was. God who is is speaking in Genesis 126, saying, let us, us, God who is, God who was, God who is to come, spirit, blood, water, make man, man is spirit, woman is water, seed is blood, in our image. So that's what's going on. And those are the six-day people. Notice God is creating them. They have dispensation directly with God Almighty. They don't have to go through Christ directly. He says, go out, be fruitful, and multiply. Boom. They go out, fruitful, and multiply. They subdue the animals. They, they've been doing that for hundreds of thousands and millions of years. They've been around a long, 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 long time. They are RH positive, exclusive, generally dark, straight hair, beardless. And they've been around a long, 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 long time. Seventh-day people, the gods that are like Adam, they began incarnating through Adam's recent incarnation, Genesis 3.21. So most of them have positive blood too. But a mix, there's a mixture, about 15% in the United States, that have negative blood. Where every natural born, all the parents in their lineage are American Indian, RH positive blood, straight hair, beardless generally. 
So whenever you get the seventh day people in there, that you start getting the mixes. But what's going on with that is we're redoing things that have already been done. We're going to get that here in a second. So sometimes seventh day people and sixth day people mix, like with me, Creek Indians. My great grandmother, my mother's side, black as a blackboard, Creek Indian, 100%. And I was raised by, um, spent many, many summers growing up with my grandparents and my great grandparents. And uh, raised by what appeared to be, to me as a kid, a black woman and an Indian grandmother. That's one of the reasons I have difficulty with the racism thing. Because whenever you're raised that way, and your great grandmother's black, even though she's Indian, then that's just that forms your mindset, that, and so that's just normal for you. And so, people who can see the differences rather than just seeing us all as people, lives matter. When you try to say white lives or red lives or yellow lives or it matters, then it's like they matter more, and that's not that's has nothing to do with reality. We're all people. Period. Even if we're six-day people or seven-day people, we all have souls and we're all, we all are people, human beings. Okay, so this is uh, put the woman back inside the man and the restored man back inside the angel greater half. And you have a living soul like the host, like Adam was in Genesis 2-7 and like the host from the perfect ages of Genesis 1-1. Those are the ages that existed before us. The ages of Genesis 1-1. The Big Bang did not create this, this creation. God did. The Big Bang destroyed a previously existing creation of singularity hosts that created the heavens where the angels went and the earth where the men went. And whenever you put them all back together again, they go to guess where? Heaven. That's the soul of this universe. Okay. Then uh, here's your own words. This is um, Galen quoting me. However, six-day people are all victims during the satanic rebellion in God's infinite realm on the day Satan murdered Adam using his sons of disobedience. B. The six-day people have nothing to do with satanic rebellion and are victims being restored part of heaven of Genesis 1-8. I've mentioned before, seven-day people, are the, your souls are tethered to heaven of Genesis 1-1. You're a God from God's infinite realm. You're here an incarnate God. Redoing things already done. Cause happened in the infinite realm. Effect is here. People think they have choice. Yeah, you have choice. 100% in the infinite realm. But now we're doing things already done. The way that they have been done. And that's the way things will be done to the end of all these ages. For those that are coming after us. So then, as I stated in... Um, no, this is where he quotes me. And then this is Galen speaking. As I stated in prior questions, if you would cite where you get this information, then perhaps I could far more easily gain an understanding of your point of view, let alone your alleged statements of fact. I hear this from those that I'm helping all the time. Because they're standing in front of a giant boulder they can't see around, and by their questions, God leaves me to see what they're trying to see, and then my job is to help them get around that boulder and see it. But until they get around it and see it with their own spiritual eyes, they just cannot see it. And the fact that I can see it kind of, you know, kind of gets kind of gets people a little bit. But then once they can see it, they go, man, you're right. You're really, really right all along. So these are um, statements of fact based upon truths taught from Genesis to Revelation and everywhere in between for those with spiritual eyes from God to see. Begin with the basic dispensational truths taught in the Pauline epistles. About those of us baptized into Christ's body upon obeying the gospel. So this is from First. This is Paul writing to the Corinthians and writing to the Romans. We're going to put them together. Same topic. For even as the body is one, yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one Spirit we're all baptized into one body. Whether Jews, Greeks, slaves, free, we're all made to drink of one drink. And then he's teaching the Romans. Maybe Paul's greatest epistle. If you just are your new baby in Christ, Romans is for you. As you get older in Christ, the Ephesians, the Colossians, the uh, prison epistles is going to be more. So uh, for just as we, we have many members in one body and all the members do not have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. 
don't let this last part escape you and individually members of one another we're all connected that's the way it is in the infinite realm that's the way it is in heaven it's less obvious here for most of us some of us can see it and blessed are those i mean who see it in heaven great more blessed are those who can see it under the veil of this darkness so while Christ's body members are baptized into Christ with different functions, we are also individually members of one another. The concept of members being baptized into the body of others is demonstrated for Paul for those baptized into Moses. And we can pull that up. And you're going to see that they all spank, drank the same drink. They're all baptized into the Moses and into the sea. You have all these water witness signs because Moses is the water witness. Elijah is the spirit witness. Christ is the blood witness into whom they are baptized. So there's patterns here, but you can see them. You find the many water signs, you can stop this video and go and look at it yourself. The link's right there for you, for those first subscribers. Take the tru these truths from these lessons to Matthew 17 to realize that two of the three witnesses, Moses and Christ and Elijah, two of the three there are described as having members baptized into their bodies. That's Christ and Moses, both by Paul. And perhaps the truth will dawn that Elijah also has members baptized into his body. That's the angels. The other half of the first picture that I showed you. Adam and Eve, mother of all living, all men. Adam is father of all the angels. I know it's difficult to follow the types. And slowly, you'll begin to see the lights will slowly begin to come on. So you're going to go to Matthew uh, 17, and you see Peter, John, and James standing in front of Christ, Samoja, and Elijah. In 16, the last verses say that some of you will see me coming into my um, kingdom. And that's what he's showing you right here, the next verse. Some of those are Peter, John, and James that he was speaking to. He took them up on the mount. Elijah, Christ, and Moses. Now. Whenever you get more into the book, see how those simple diagrams, just three little circles, turn into more? That's what happens as you go through the book. They're going to get more complicated more complicated. Same patterns, though. So what you're looking at here is the same thing that you're looking at right here. Oh, I'm sorry, right here. All the angels on one side, body of, body of Elijah. All the world, all the living on the other side. And where are they going? The kingdom of heaven. Flesh and blood cannot in inherit the kingdom of heaven. And guess what? Angels can't either. The only reason that you'll find angels there and there is because God tore the veil open and bring the, to bring them down here as messengers. Hebrew and Greek. The word for messenger and angel, exactly the same thing. Sometimes you have to wonder which is really. Sometimes it's an angel there which should be messenger. Sometimes messenger when it should be angel. Being described. Here's New Jerusalem. Same pattern. You see New Jerusalem being lowered. This, in another image in my book, you'll see that this mirrors Christ in you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in me. Spirit, blood, and water. Same exact pattern. Because heaven is in, this heaven right here is incarnate inside of us. This is Christ in you right here. The whole realm incarnate inside you. Our access to all, everything that's going on in heaven is inward. And in heaven, the sons communicate with each other inwardly through the incarnate Christ in us. Sounds too fantastic to be true, doesn't it? But it's, it's real. And whenever you're looking at these three witnesses, Moses, Christ, and Elijah, you're looking at the first three witnesses, the only three begottens of the Bible. The Lord God, who's the Lamb of God. The Lord God of Genesis 2 is the Lamb of God. He makes Adam and takes Eve out. Adam is Elijah. Eve is Moses. Moses' name means drawn, right? Being drawn out of the Nile River? No. Being drawn out of Adam. So the, the types are all there, especially whenever you understand who's the spirit witness, water and blood, and then you go back and read the Bible again. The lights just start coming on. You start hearing the angel song coming through those, uh, through those witnesses. So the reality or alleged statement of fact for some, I was being, Galen, I was being a little facetious there, is that 
the first three begotten witnesses from the garden are also testifying as the last three witnesses. Christ says over and over again, the first to be last, last to be first. And it has more than one meaning, but this is one of them. That's right here. So this explains, well, first of all, Adam and Eve, you go to, uh, what is it? Zechariah chapter 4, start at verse, start at verse, nah, I'm sorry, my, my brain's a little tired. Zechariah chapter 4, start at verse, I think it's 10, 11, 12. That sounds wrong. Well, anyway, it asked the question of who these witnesses are, these two olive trees and these lampstands. Adam and Eve in the heaven, they're the lampstands. On earth, they're the olive trees. They're the only exception to the Hebrews 9.27 rule. That's why Christ said that Elijah's coming again. And he intimated that he's the prophet of his true identity when he said he's the prophet, but he's more than a prophet. The only one with a higher rank than the prophet in the kingdom is the king. Because Elijah, Elijah, John the Baptist, son of a priest, and the, trees, the priest that went home to the tribe of Judah, and the prophet, who was also the king. So what people don't realize, whenever Christ says at the Mount of Transfiguration, right at the end, whenever they're... Uh, he says that, that uh, they ask him the question, why do they say that Elijah must come first? Last two verses of the Old Testament. And he says Elijah must come first and restore all things. That's what he's going to do. That hasn't happened yet. That starts the day of the Lord. So um, the point that I'm making here is Adam and Eve are placed in skins. That's human skins. Everything before Genesis 3.21 is in, happening in heaven. There's no procreation there. They had to be put in the skins, so then Genesis, they could go through Genesis 4, start at Genesis 4, and we're about to get to that, where Adam knew Eve, and that word, no, that is holding a hidden message, because in the infinite realm, the way we know each other is we incarnate into one another, and Adam going into Eve is being demonstrated through the Hebrew. So, uh, see what I mean? This can get a little bit complicated. Whenever you're trying, especially if you don't have a foundation by reading the beginning of the book and you're looking at these complicated diagrams that are near the end of the book. So, what I'm trying to do is explain the difference between the six-day people. The six-day people were created by God inside of Adam as members of his body on the day that he was created. Every God is created with his own members. And this shouldn't be foreign to you after reading, realizing that we're members of Christ's body and individually members of one another. Thing is, Adam's brethren that are like him, that are gods like him, they incarnate inside of him too. And then Adam sets them around a big table however he wants. And the way that he places them around the table de de determines his outward appearance. And if he chooses wisely, like Paul says, it's, uh, the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians only my I'm, my apologies, my mind is really really tired. Is it 4:15 that uh, you may have many tutors in Christ, but only one Father? Because through the gospel in Christ, I became your Father. That's a that's a uh, transliteration, I should say, not exactly. And the, the reason is because he was the first on the road to Damascus, saved by God's grace through faith, to become a member of Christ's body apart from the gospel of kingdom. And uh, if you don't know the difference between the, the, the word of the cross, gospel message, and the gospel of the kingdom, one's of water, one's of blood, you cannot mix them together. Very, very important. Okay, so repeat Christ's statements, teaching the disciples how to pray, saying, on earth as it is in heaven. Say it to yourself, on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. Christ says it a lot of times. When he gives the keys to Peter, he says, I'm giving them to you. And what's you bound on earth has already been bound in heaven. Because it's on earth as it is in heaven. But that's an incomplete statement. There's a missing component. On earth as it is in heaven, as it is in God's infinite realm. On earth as it is in heaven, as it is in God's infinite realm. There are three witnesses testifying in Genesis 1-1. Um, one, one. Earth, heaven, God. God. God's infinite realm. This is depicting three different realms. This is the only realm that's real. Heaven and earth are created 
that everything that's in the heaven and earth has a beginning and it has an end. The only place that is real, this is a matrix, this is a matrix inside the matrix. This is the matrix that is inside of this matrix containing us. And it's contained by God like the infinite realm shell I've shown that to you guys before. So John stands looking in heaven. John's right here. And he's looking, he sees the lamb in the center of the throne, right here. And it appears that there's four living creatures. But he, what he's doing is he's looking through the three realms. He's seeing the face of the man. The face of the man, guess who the man is? Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. On earth, he was raised above all the heavens, Ephesians 4, 8, and seated right over here. So when John's looking across in Revelation, he sees him, face of the man. And he sees these other three living creatures, the lion, the eagle, and the bullock. God who was, God to come, God who is. And they appear to be standing around him, but it's just from John's perspective. Looking through the three realms, God's perspective looks in the opposite direction. Okay. So, heaven and earth are created. The types and common spiritual sense say that the infinite realm where we are gods is the only realm that's real and that we are merely incarnate in the heaven and the earth to serve God's purpose for the ages for restoring all things one body member at a time so the next universe over that could be you or me this particular universe represents one son of God and that's his name is Adam we're members of his body in this kingdom we're members of Christ's body in this kingdom. Guess whose body you're a member of over here in the infinite realm? God's body. Over here. So what, what happened in the, during the perfect ages, God asked his word to go incarnate over here as heaven and then to remake Adam inside of himself. Perfect, mature, complete, just like in the infinite realm. Only immortal souls. Perfect ages. But then at some point, it was made formless and void to recreate Adam's murder in this realm. That divided all the hosts into their angel and their man halves. You have an angel half over here. That's your soulmate. It's your angel half over here. Your body half's down here. You have to get back together here. So you go to heaven. And for most, that's going to be the marriage supper of the Lamb. Their angel half and their man half put back together again so they can join us in the Lamb. We were put back together by obeying the gospel. We get those things as a free gift. For obedience of faith to the gospel. Others that are going to come by works. They're going to have a long road. And work and work and work. To earn things that God gave us for free. And become extremely jealous. Whenever they realize it. So the concept of knowing. I don't need to spend a lot of time here. Adam knew Eve. You can go and look at the blue letter Bible. To know. To perceive. Discriminate. Know. Confess. Okay. So it's. It's not just the three witnesses. It's also what God has put within the languages whenever you start dissecting and trisecting the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Well, that was done first before God ever showed me the three witnesses. So the foundation was already laid. Made it a little bit easier for him to show me, but still it took decades for him to do it. So us going into one another, knowing each other, uh, we incarnate into each other in the infinite realm. And all of our brethren. Then some of your brethren like you. Some of the, your brethren hate your guts. The ones that like you put you on the right hand. The ones that don't like you, they put you on the left. And it changes their outward appearance each time they do this. And then God rewards them, who are wise, for placing the wise sons at their right. And leaving the immature, babe-like sons on the left. Whenever you get it backwards, it affects your it rewards in the infinite realm. And affects your standing in the mountain of God. Same thing in heaven. Christ's body is like a pyramid. Christ at the top. His body goes down to a base. Common stones are at the bottom. Fewer choice stones at the top. Just like with any pyramid you ever see. So it's a mirror image of, it's a little bit different, but it's kind of the same, of the mountain of God that's in the infinite realm that contains God's body members. Okay. So, um, then there's your last statement. The seventh day people are here, are here to be judged. Those are the ones that are gods like Adam, like Adam. For active participation in the satanic rebellion as victims, the sons of light, 
and perpetrators, the sons of disobedience or the sons of darkness, for which I can partially um, understand and agree this is Galen's um, writing. So he quoted me and now he put me in the brackets. And he says, for which I can partially understand and agree because of our performance, including faith or lack of faith, is something for which judgment does effectively occur, whether before or immediately uh, upon resurrection. But we have no part in the Satanic Rebellion unless, of course, our memory, wiped prior to injection into this existence, erased our knowledge of it. And it's a good thing you put a question mark there, because that leaves it open-ended for, first, my duty is to tell the truth about these related Bible topics regardless of what others choose to believe. God makes the truth known to those he deliber did deliberately selects by divine revelation. Read the definition. I, I break it down word by word in my book. Then, at the, time of, at the time of God's choosing, God chooses you. We don't choose God. We don't wake up one morning and want to be a Christian. God chooses us. He sends the preacher with the faith of Jesus in him that is then conveyed to you so you can believe. He chooses us through the gospel, using the gospel. 2 Thessalonians 2, start at 13. Okay, so he has to choose you first, and then he, has to, he opens the door for you to see things as things progress. As you mature, and I can tell you by experience, when you're just trying to feed yourself, feed yourself, and know and read, and you're not helping others, God's only going to show you so much. It's when you make the decision to go and help others, and you're answering the questions for others, just like with you. And then you have to sit down and go do the research and dig these things up. That's where God takes you and opens up new doors. When you're willing to help others, God turns around and turns, sends it back to you. Okay. So then this is going to affect the remembrance. Unless we don't have any memory of it, because we do not have any memory of it. And this is from Ecclesiastes 1, 9, 11. I cite this pretty often. With my notes that are in here. That which has been in the infinite realm is that which will be in heaven and in earth. And that which has been done is that which will be done in heaven and in earth. So there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one might say, see this? It is new. Already ha it has existed for ages, which were before us. There is no remembrance of early th earlier things, also of the latter things, which will occur. Paul writes about the ages that are coming. There will be for them no remembrance among those who will come later still. That's the way it works. Because in the infinite realm, we know God. He puts us here and he stands behind the veil and he sees if we're good or if we're bad. Which he already knows. We're already going through all, we've already, we're in God's judgment room in the infinite realm right now. It's just from our perspective, even before the earth and heaven were created, we're standing there frozen motionless within a one split second of time. All the ages are going to go by before one second of time passes in the infinite realm from our perspective in the earth and in heaven. And heaven is frozen still from our perspective too. Michael the Archangel, Dragon, they're fighting. And they're right in the middle of it. And they have been since, since the times of Genesis. And they're going to continue to be to the end of this age. Maybe one second passes. They're like giant constellations interacting together. But if you look at Leo uh, and I interacting with Libra, and then they appear from our perspective to be motionless. That's exactly how the screen would look if you could see it. Talked about that last, um, in the last lesson. <clears throat> so there's nothing new. Choices were made in the infinite realm that are playing out in heaven and in the earth has created effect realms. The devil, the beast, and the false prophet are destined to be destroyers going about to devour because that is what Satan, the whole, the singularity host in the infinite realm. That's what Satan did in God's infinite realm that established the patterns for how things shake out in the heaven and the earth. See, the word is manifest here as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's a trinity. Satan in the infinite realm is manifest here as the devil, the beast, and the false prophet with all the members of their body. The 666, the key to understanding, Revelation 13, 18. He who has wisdom, he will understand. 666, see, there's three of them, is the number of a man, and it's a heavenly man. And it's comprised of the devils, 
the beast and the false prophet, all the members of their body. Like we're members of Christ's body, Antichrist has got members of his body too. Okay, so the, uh, God threw Satan out of the infinite realm, down to heaven. All right, Michael throws the devil, the dragon, down into this creation. And he finds that, finds that he's here. This is the third strike for, for uh, Satan in the infinite realm. As his three witnesses. Last strike. They end up in the lake of fire. And then the, the um, on earth, as it is in heaven, as it is in the infinite realm, is complete. That's what we're here for. To get to, to complete all these things that have already been done. Then he says, moreover, those of us accepting the random paid for, um, the ransom paid for us by Christ are called kings and priests. Well, we're kings. Peter, John, and James are priests. Word of the cross, gospel of the kingdom, okay? blood and water. In the next life, with one of our duties being part of God's heavenly judicial court system, that's absolutely 100% true. It's in a, the New Jerusalem is the administrative hub where the Lord stands, the Lamb of God, in heaven until the end of the age is the administrative hub of heaven as it is right now. That's where Adam and Eve were before they were cast down, where the Lord God is. He was walking with them. Well, he's still there. He incarnated on, into, onto this planet as Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. Okay, so... Uh, let me see if I can get back on track here. Next life, with one of our duties being part of God's heavenly judicial court system, where we will be busy throughout the thousand-year millennial reign of Christ. And my head kind of goes down whenever you use this, whenever you use this phrase. Not on earth, as most incorrectly assert. 100% right. And the millennial reign, it's not going to be what people think. The uh, the phrase a thousand years. You know, like when somebody says it's going to take a long time, you can just easily say it's going to take a thousand years. That doesn't mean it's going to take a thousand years. It's a phrase that means so long as it takes. And if you take that back to Acts chapter 3, start 19, you're going to see that Christ has to hold, I mean, heaven has to hold Christ by the hand until the restoration of all things, to the fulfillment of all the words of the prophets of old. All those things you see written in the Old Testament had to be fulfilled before. Heaven can let Christ go, and then he can come back. Our being caught up meets us in the air. The world doesn't see that. That's his mystery coming. We come back with him in great glory when he returns in glory. Paul tells us that in Colossians 1, 1 through 4. Get down to verse 4, you'll see when the Lord's revealed, we're coming back with him. The bride's coming back with him too. Read Revelation 19, marriage supper, verses 5 through 10. And then what happens right after that? They return with him too. So the bride and the body Mighty angels of God and the two witnesses, because they're down there testifying while we're still in heaven. The beast kills them and their three and a half days are dead. Nobody going to even touch their body. It's going to be like they have the coronavirus. After this thing, people start dying rapidly. Lots of them. From hemorrhagic fever, body's going to pile up in the streets. Nobody's going to go touch them. Because the infection is going to be so bad by then, people that get the bug, it's going to incubate in a day or two days. And you're going to be dead before a week's over later in the timeline. It's going to be like that. Nobody's going to touch their bodies until the Lord raises them up and they come up with us. They return with us too. Whole party comes back for the battle of Revelation. Everything at the end, whenever the bad guys get theirs at the end of this. Really, really great story. What's going to happen. So um, I must assume that uh, your statements, I'm looking at the time of this video. It's, it's going to take four hours to upload. Um, I must assume that your statement concerns those of us obeying the word of the cross gospel message as active participants in Christ's burial, death, burial, and resurrection. God needs Christ's body members to occupy the vacated seats. I've shared that with you guys before. We're going to judge the world and the angels. You have to judge the world and the angels because they're two halves of the same immortal soul. You have to. But people that think that we're going to judge the angels like that's beyond us, no, it's not. It's absolutely within our call of duty because we are ordered to be restored. Now, everybody else has got to be restored like us. Well, how's God going to do that? He has to have an administration. So he selected us by his grace. If it wasn't for his grace and his mercy, nobody would be saved. So he is, you're lucky to be chosen, called to serve in this administration. That's right here. Lots and lots of people going to heaven. Few are called to be members of Christ's body. 
says, uh, I know this conflicts with your belief about a thousand years. And so I don't need to explain my position, but of course I am. And uh, the day of the Lord fits the Sabbath for the earth as a perfect 1,000 year period in my book. And I obviously digress. And um, we've already, I just said I disagree. That the uh, the phrase a thousand years, just explained that to you earlier, appears in two books. It's a phrase used to convey the meaning as long as it takes. And this is what I shared with you just earlier. So the day of the Lord starts, Paul describes how it starts. Christ, Joel, Zechariah, all of them, Ezekiel, all of them. They describe how it ends. They see into the day of the Lord, real and good. But they don't see anything inside this mystery period. This, These are things according to the revelation of the mystery happening now. The day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night because nobody in the Old Testament was allowed to see how it started. God gave that to Paul through Christ, part of a revelation, a series of revelations. And then that's shared in his Paul, Pauline epistles. You have to put, keep Pauline epistles within the veil, realizing this is a mystery period about all the things for the body of Christ, our mystery gospel, our mystery church, our mystery translation to, to immortality. We're judging the world and angels, all that. Nobody in the Old Testament saw that. The, it's embedded in the Old Testament, but Paul has to go back and tell you where it does. Because that, the, that message was never sent by the Lord God through Moses to anybody in the Old Testament. They were not to understand it that way. That's just how the codes were put in so that we can understand it after we receive our steward, who is Paul. Paul's a steward for the dispensation of God's grace that was given to him for us. Just like Moses was chosen to be the slave over all the other slaves, and Peter was chosen to be over all those of the early reigns bride, and Elijah's going to be the steward over those in the late reigns bride. That's Hebrews. Revelation is written to them as a personal mail, like the Pauline epistles are written to you. So he uh, comments and says that since you know the Bible so well, I am sure there's no need to cite the scriptures, and you're absolutely correct. It helps for me to understand the context. It also allows me to know the the um, translation that you're using without having to, you know, the keyword and to look things up and use my memory and things. But so providing scripture references does help. But in general, my mind's already keyword and he does that. It's tired at the end of the night from doing it. From the news, to listening to you guys, to reading your words, it's automatic. It's, my mind just does it. It's just cataloging and filing, and it's judging. My, I'm sorry, I can't help it. And uh, every gift has an Achilles heel, and that's one of them for me. So generally, in your question, I can already know the Bible, that you, the translation that you're using, and the verses that you're talking about. That's why we went to Ecclesiastes. When you, meant, when you mention uh, memory and remembrance. Um, then, uh, I'm not trying to be combative. On the contrary, you seem to enjoy debate far more than I do. I love debating the Bible. I love debating the Bible. God showed it to me. I have it figured out. And it stands the test of debate. You go to ChristianForums.com, BibleDebateForums.com, TheologyWeb.org, Google my name, it's generally going to be 2004, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, things like that. But you can find debates on almost every Bible topic. Really love to do it. And if you, if uh, Countering Biblical Contradictions, Andrew Tong, University of Southern California, that was a late 1990s. Late 1990s? Yeah, late 1990s thing. He took the site down. I could not believe it. 30,000 posts were written there by me answering biblical contradictions for everybody. There are no contradictions in the Bible when you interpret it properly. There's no contradiction between what's written in the Bible and science either when you interpret all the evidence correctly. There's lots more information here. Karen's kind of new, and uh, she doesn't want to go to Chapter 2 without an understanding, so she's sending questions. So there's more content down here in this newsletter. And uh, this is what I have to share with you this time. And my apologies again for being late on this. And one of the reasons is my Verizon. My, my internet supplier, they gave us 65 gigs for two last two months. I didn't know it ended. And so I've been doing a little too much. And now this, I don't know if it's down to 2G, 1G or whatever, but uh, the 34-minute video from the Black Star, it took six hours to upload. And so it's slowing me down. But after the first, going to have an interview there on July the 1st. That's a good date to have them whenever I get my new Gs. So I'm sure you guys know what I mean. And uh, so I'm a little bit um, constrained here at the moment, but things are going to pick up here after the first. So thank you again for your support.
and I get more information at the website. Those of you who have not ordered your nano silver, then you're rolling the dice. I feel badly for you. If you're going out in the environment, you're rolling the dice. You do not know what you're going to bring back. It's the Herald Strain. They want you to get that Herald Strain in you so they can release the mutagen that's going to recombine with it later in the timeline. I thought everybody understood that. So either everybody understands that or you're all stocked up on nano silver. Because the day is going to come where you're not going to be able to get it anywhere. So take the opportunity when the, when the opportunity is still open. And everybody that orders by Tuesday, tomorrow, at 4 o'clock Eastern Time, you will be shipped on Wednesday morning. 100%. After that, then your shipment is going to go out on Saturday morning. Wednesdays and Saturdays are shipping days around here. So the day prior, that's packing days. Appreciate your support very, very much. And I will see you on the next uh, Black Star COVID Super Plume or Mystery Report.